What's up, guys? It's Rowan. And Brooklyn. Here from Art Smart, Smart TV, TV, bringing you another episode of the HSC English Lit Program, officially known as Help. Now, one of the key things we see students struggle with time and time again is analysis. And so, it's one of these key skills under the new HSC syllabus you really need to nail. So, in this episode, we're going to be diving in and looking at analysis in relation to a specific text, which is Keats and Bright Star. But before we do that, why analysis? Well, basically, analysis is the building blocks of our essay, and it's so crucial that we get that right. It's pretty easy to have a good thesis, but what's really going to bring your essay from a C up to an A is going to be having amazing analysis. So our hope is today that we're going to show you how to do that for Module A prescribed texts uh, for Advanced English for Keats and Bright Star. Now, note, if you don't study Keats and Bright Star, we'll bring out more help episodes that cover other texts. But even if you don't study it, I encourage you to stay tuned and keep on watching this because it's going to show you the steps on how to do good analysis. And the more that you understand the steps, the more you get exposed to them, the better you're going to be able to analyze any text that gets put in front of you, which ultimately is a key skill you're going to need in paper one for the unseen section of human experience. So. Uh, let's dive in. Um, what I want to look at though before we dive in really quickly is what are the two key rules of you know, good analysis writing we need to make sure that we're hitting as we create our paragraph. Yeah, so the first rule is that we need to make sure that we're linking our technique to our idea. So our technique being our metaphors, our similes, our symbolism, and our idea being our thesis, our question and the topic sentence. And making sure that we're actually seeing a meaningful connection between that technique and that idea. Um, the second rule is making sure we're actually saying something meaningful about our idea. Um, students often have a tendency to just label at the end of the um, point what their idea is, just repeat it three times, done with the paragraph. So we want to make sure that when we're analysing, each point is saying something new and something meaningful about the idea. Awesome. So what we've got is we've got two rules. And what I want you to think about here is as we unpack this paragraph, I want you to think about are we ticking those boxes for those two rules. Keep us accountable. Now, um, for this, we're going to be looking at for Keats, uh, the Grecian urn uh, poem. Um, and we're going to be doing a, a comparison and looking at how uh, you know that compares with uh, really, uh, the film Bright Star and the relationship that Keats and Fanny have. So, to kick us off, you know, what's the sort of topic sentence or the idea that we're really trying to explore here, Brooklyn? Yeah, so we're going to be looking at how Keats's idealistic poetry grapples with the conflict between the transient and eternal, whereas Campion's realist film makes a purely physical examination of love and death. It's a bit of a mouthful. That is, that is definitely. So what we're needing to do is we're needing to look at Keats and sort of showing, well look, there's this conflict between transit and internal and then separately but making connections, we're saying, well, you know what, the film does something different, right? It's much more realistic as opposed to idealistic and it's trying to look at the physical examination, not necessarily this transit and internal. But it still okay. sort of grapples with that and deals with that and we'll talk about this. It does, that, right? And so it's not just about saying they're both entirely different. It's about trying to look at where they're similar, but then highlighting difference. Yep, absolutely. Awesome. So for Keats, um, we've got the urn in the Grecian urn, and it's you know used as a microcosm of this internal struggle, right? In terms of this idea of whether love can be eternal and whether death is final. Um, what's a, a quote uh, that represents this, and uh, you know what does it mean? What does it say? Grecian urn is actually so filled with quotes all the way through, so I literally just pulled out the very first line of the poem, and we're going to use that one. So we've got, Thou still unravished bride of quietness. So what we've got there is, this is referring to an image of a woman on the Grecian urn that Keats is describing, and it's sort of her stuck in a moment of her life. But we've got these connotations of the eternal nature of this woman through the word still and quietness. She's on an urn, she's eternal, she's stuck there, standing still forever. Um, but in contrast, we've got this word unravished. And although she is unravished, the word ravished sort of brings in these sexual connotations. And yeah, so basically she's sort of just standing there on the cusp of having sex eternally is, is the image that Keats is going for here. And so that's what he's trying to capture really, isn't he? It's his attempt at trying to say, well, look, actually, maybe we can capture these transient moments for eternity. Um, and I think it, it's interesting because 
um, you know, if we really look at it, you know, we've we've got definitely this contrast. Would you say juxtaposition? Yeah, is that sure. is that going too far? No, that works. Uh, between the ravished, unravished, and the quietness, and that's ultimately, I think, a really nice um, microcosm, as we said, of that struggle. Okay, yeah. that struggle between something eternal and something that's transient, right? Um, you know, uh, love, sexuality, virginity being something that's inherently very transient, um, but it being captured for all time. So that's, I guess, our first example here for Keats. Now, because this is a comparative, right, you know, do we dive into another example? Do we compare it with, uh, you know, Bright Star? What do we do? What do you recommend? Well, it's basically up to you, um, whichever, and, and I think it's also up to the specific paragraph that you're writing. So. Um, it's true with what flows best, I think, and what's going to flow best in this episode and in the, the paragraph is we're just going to go back into Keats and then um, we're going to look at two quotes as well from Bright Star after so, that. So to highlight, there isn't some formula here, okay? There isn't necessarily a formula that says Keats, Bright Star, Keats, Bright Star in a paragraph. Um, now that could be a paragraph structure you choose to use. Um, equally though, we could go Keats, Keats, Bright star, bright star. In both cases, what's going to matter is how effective we are at connecting and comparing the two, regardless of whether or not it's ABAB or AABB in our structure for the paragraph. Mm. Um, and I think there's advantages to both. You're probably going to be a little bit more comparative if you're going ABAB, and you're probably going to go into a bit more depth if you're going AABB, and I'm probably a bit more focused on that depth, so that's why we're doing it that way. Great. So uh, we're going to jump into another example from, from Keats. Uh, so uh, we've got a quote, that cannot shed your leaves nor ever bid the spring adieu. What, so it's talking about a tree. That's, that's an important quote. Point. It's so, important to know. I think we probably worked that out, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. Right? Well, we started like in the middle of a, a sentence. So Good. So what, what, Keith, what is Keats trying to do here, Brooklyn? Um, so what he's... Well, basically to explain the quote, um, he, he's saying that there's a tree here and the tree is never going to be able to drop its leaves like you normally do in autumn and it's never going to be able to bring, uh, bid the spring adieu so it, it can't, we can't say goodbye to the spring. So we've basically got this tree stuck in a moment of springtime forever. And springtime um, to the romantic poets is really symbolic, it s symbolises this moment of, of the sublime and beauty and birth and rebirth. Um. And I think that's the really critical thing for me, you know, is that it captures this moment of, of birth and youth, mm. right? And again, we've got this idea of, you know, something that, uh, that Keats is doing is like challenging one and subverting the, the cyclical nature of seasons and just the nature that is life, right? That we go through these stages and we age and we get old and we die. And he's saying, well, you know, if we can capture this moment of incredible beauty here, um, this is what it looks like. Mm. Um, so, um, you know, I think really what it shows is this deep desire of, of Keats for the finite, you know, birth, youth, uh, life to, to be kept eternal. Yeah, um, absolutely. Now, is there anything else here or is now the time to, to sort of create this comparative with Bright Star? Yep, so we're going to jump into Bright Star now. Um, so in Bright Star, on the other hand, to Keats, we have a focus on the physical, um, and the temporal aspects of love and death. And um, Campion, the director, is using a more sort of psychological realist way to explore those ideas. And I think it's important to note, it's not like Keats has entirely not explored the physical aspects of love. I mean, we've got Unravished Bright <laughs> as one of our earlier examples, but I think we certainly see it more strongly expressed uh, in Bright Star, and that's partly this idea that it's not that both are entirely different and expressing different ideas, it's that um, there's some similarity that sits underneath this and then... They come to different conclusions on those ideas and I think that's the key point. That's exactly right. So we've got um, a reoccurring motif that occurs throughout of butterflies. Um, what does this mean, Brooklyn? Um, well, so think, think about what is a butterfly. A butterfly grows from a caterpillar, which is kind of an ugly bug. Then it has. Oh, my caterpillar. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, then it has this beautiful moment, um, transient, short, um, finite moment of yeah, being one of the most beautiful creatures on earth. Um, and then it dies quite quickly. So a butterfly is really, I guess, a symbol of transience. Yeah. Yeah, I think definitely it's a symbol of transience. It's also a symbol of 
really, you know, this 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 beauty that you you know we might want to hold on to and capture, um, and unfortunately we don't. So we've got uh, this example here. It's this reoccurring motif, and and what happens is Fanny. I mean, she keeps a butterfly farm, doesn't yeah, she? So right. she's constantly, actively, what trying to to catch these things. Yeah. Sure. Now, um, what are some scenes where that's expressed? Are there some some sort of uh, you know, things that we can use yeah. to show that. Yeah, so um, around the time that she's receiving letters, we get all these close-ups um, of the butterflies. Um, there's one sitting on a jar. And then we've got long shots of Fanny holding the butterflies in her hand. So we've sort of um, sort of got this all-encompassing camera work that is showing like the extent to which Fanny has embraced these butterflies into her life. So I think what's interesting here is that, uh, and this is where it's similar, but the point that's made is different, is that... You know, the act of Fanny capturing these butterflies is in some extent no different to Keats' attempts to, you know, uh, capture the, you know, unravished nature of, you know, the bride in the Grecian urn, in that Fanny's trying to capture these butterflies in this short moment of beauty that they have. Now, I think ultimately here the difference is what well, the butterflies die. die. <laughs> um, and so we can see, therefore, that perhaps the point that's being made in Bright Star is a very different one, mm. um, where Keats is idealistic and there's the hope that by the end of it, the, you know, that the tree is still in spring and the bride is still unravished, um, the outcomes that we see in Bright Star are not the same. Um, what are those outcomes? Yeah, so that brings us into point four, and unfortunately, I hope this isn't spoiling the film for you, so turn off now if you haven't Alert watched it spoilers. yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, at the end, Keats dies. Basically, what, what's expressed at the end of the film is that um, life is finite um, and this finitude is tragic and unbearable for humans to deal with. And so it's interesting because we see that that's in many respects, you know, that the struggle that, that Keats himself deals with in his own poetry, um, but we see the difference being that we don't, we don't see in the poetry that finitude. Right? We see it as something that's held off. We see the moments captured. And the contrast here with Bright Star is that we see, you know, the finality of death in all its ugliness, really. And I yeah. think that's the imagery that really comes through yeah. um, when Fanny discovers Keith's death. So what do we see when, when that happens? Yeah, so we've got that really tragic scene where Fanny's sitting at the bottom of a staircase and she's crying and blubbering and sobbing and she's not able to breathe. We've got some, some dramatic lighting, it's very dark and it's creating sort of a chiaroscuro effect on her face. And yeah, so this lighting is helping to symbolise this utter devastation. And then we've also got um, the, the mise-en-scene and the visuals and the sound. Um, and that that's just so tragic in this moment. And we've got her sobbing and her gasping for breaths and her pointing to her chest and um, that that's really just representing this utter, utter despair. And I think what's interesting there is sobbing, gasping for breaths, pointing at her chest, those are not necessarily techniques per se. What it's important that you do in your essays is find things that the composer is doing, find wh whether that's a technical technique or not, and then analyze what that thing is that they're doing. So what I'm basically saying is you can kind of make up Technique, so long as it is the composer doing something to create an effect. And look, the observation I have, just to sort of maybe bring these two together in some respects, is what I find interesting is that, you know, Keats in the Grecian urn, um, there's, you know, a great sense of beauty that's captured and expressed, but there's really a, a lack of emotional resonance, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we contrast that, and you can see that contrast with Bright Star, where you know, uh, with the you know his ultimate death and this this image of like ugly crying. If we're going to be really you know really honest, right? Like, it's not a beautiful scene. I mean, sure, maybe the lighting, but ultimately, what's happening is not an act of beauty, and yet it's incredibly emotionally uh, powerful. And so, I suppose that's where we see this really nice contrast between the two, in terms of the different uh, outcome and the different take they end up having on these similar ideas of uh, you know how do we how do we deal with that conflict, that desire for, you know, eternal? Um, and, you know, we see it, I think, expressed in the end, ultimately, in two very different ways. So, any final comments, Brooklyn? No, that's all from me. Brilliant, guys. So, there you've heard it. Um, an unpacking of a, a paragraph for Keats and Brightstar. 
um, and you know some analysis and also you know different ways that you can think about how you might structure a paragraph particularly for a mod a advanced comparative essay if you have any questions about keeps or bright style leave them in the comments below or just writing analysis and, and good uh, you know, English essay writing skills. Of course, if you need more support, we've got an incredible team of teachers, tutors, and mentors that can work with you to help you transform, uh, you know, your HSC English. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for videos. Make sure you the notifications. You get notified. We bring videos every single week. So we will see you next week.